for engineering. Last time we have solved the typical example of a double stub tuner circuit in which we considered that the first stub is located at some distance away from the load. So, in that particular case, we utilize the same technique of designing the double stub tuner and we saw the second configuration how to design the double stub tuner circuit when the first stub is located at some distance away from the load. Right? So, in this lecture, we will go ahead and we will see what is the significance use of triple stub circuit and why it is needed. Okay? So, in our syllabus, we are not going to actually design a triple stub tuner, but we are going to study it theoretically. Okay? So, if you recall, when we were implementing the design procedure of double stub tuner, at that time we discussed that the double stub tuner is going to provide us almost all the possible solution in around 90 to 99 percent cases of the impedance matching issues. But there, in every example of a double stub tuner, we used to indicate a specific region. We call that particular region as a forbidden region. Okay. So, and there, if you recall, we stated that the double stub tuner circuit cannot be used to implement impedance matching if the transformed load admittance is located in that forbidden region. Right. So, this is only one of the drawback of the double stub tuner circuit. So, we have solved a couple of example based on double stub tuner and in both of these example, we have clearly indicated uh, where is the location of the forbidden region. We know that the forbidden region is represented by a constant conductance circle of a specific value. Okay. And we stated that if the transformed load admittance is located into this forbidden region, then we cannot make use of a double stub tuner or double stub matching circuit. So, this is the limitation you can say or the drawback of double stub tuner. Now, in order to come over to this drawback of double stub tuner, we go a little bit one step ahead and we will see how to come over to this particular problem and the solution is provided by a triple stub circuit. Okay. So, in this lecture, we will briefly describe what is the triple stub tuner circuit. Right? So, here is a essentially the triple stub matching circuit, how it looks like. Okay? So, in front of you on the slide, it is a typical configuration of a triple stub matching circuit. So, let us study in detail what it consists of. Now, as usual, we have the load impedance on the right hand side. Okay? And we have three stubs, stub A, stub B and stub C. Okay? The stub A stub B and stub C, these are the three stubs. These three stubs are separated with a fixed distance from each other. For example, the separation between stub A and stub B is 3 lambda by 8. It is indicated as a D2. Okay? And the separation between stub B and stub C is also kept fixed, that is 3 lambda by 8. So, you need to remember that in a triple stub configuration, the spacing between the stubs is always fixed. And normally we are going to keep it as a 3 lambda by 8 and more or less it is a constant okay? and it is a preferred choice to keep the distance between multiple stub equal to fix and that is equal to 3 lambda by 8. So, the important thing over here is in the triple stub matching circuit, the spacing between the stub is same and that is kept fixed that is 3 lambda by 8. So, D1 and D2, they are indicating the spacing between stub C and stub B. And similarly, spacing between stub B and stub A, that is fixed. Okay? And from the earlier theory, in the double stub, we already know that there could be two cases into which the location of this first stub, the first stub is denoted over here as a stub A. This stub A is located on the load itself. Okay? So, in that particular case, the location of the first stub, that is L, is going to be 0. Right? There could be another situation in which the first stub is located at some distance away from the load. 
in that particular case the location becomes non zero okay so this is a similar case that we have solved the two separate example in the double stop tuner okay so only the thing over here is we are using the additional stop okay so we will see in the theory how this particular triple stop is going to operate and how it will come over the problem of double stops tuner circuit okay so in the double stop tuner circuit we know that we have plotted the forbidden region and we have stated that if the transform the load admittance is located in the forbidden region at that time we cannot make use of a double stop so this particular circuit we will utilize to come over that particular problem and this circuit is nothing but a triple stop circuit so a generalized configuration of a triple stop shunt configuration with short circuited stub is in front of you please make sure that the spacing between these stubs is always fixed and it is kept at 3 lambda by 8 okay so we go ahead and let us see how this particular circuit works the triple stub matching circuit or tuner it is used to eliminate the drawback of double stub matching circuit okay so what is the drawback of double stub matching circuit the double stop matching circuit it suffers from one of the biggest limitation that its inability to implement matching circuit we cannot make use of a double stop tuner when the transformed load got located into the forbidden region okay so whatever problems we have solved on the double stop tuner we saw that we are calculating a forbidden region in some of the steps during the execution right so there is always associated certain amount of a forbidden region into which if the transform load admittance gets located we cannot make use of a double stop tuner okay so what is the solution then a solution is to make use of a triple stop matching circuit so we need to add one more stub into the double stop configuration so that it will become a triple stop configuration so a triple stop configuration makes essentially use of three stubs okay of which out of three stub one stub is actually used to bring the transformed load out of the forbidden region so this is a very important statement so here we already know how to make use of a double stub okay so when we add this double stub with another stub that is additional stub so that's why the circuit becomes three stubs right so what is the use of adding the third stub then when we add the third stub into the double stub circuit now this third stub will ensure that the transformed load admittance will come out of the forbidden region okay so if this is the case then the third stub acts as a additional transmission line which will take out the transformed load out of the forbidden region so once we know that if the transform load admittance gets located outside forbidden region then the further solution can be easily implemented using a double stub circuit right so the remaining two stub then so out of three stub the additional one stub is used to bring out the transformed load admittance out of the forbidden region and the remaining two stub then they are usually used in order to provide the impedance matching operation as per the theory of a double stub okay so the remaining two stub then they can be used in the double stub configuration to implement the impedance matching circuit as usual procedure of the double stub tuner right so here whatever additional stub that we are going to make use of please remember in a triple stub configuration there are three stubs okay we already know how the double stub tuner works so in order to remove the drawback of location of the load into the forbidden region what we are doing we are using one more additional stub that additional stub is going to bring out the transform load admittance out of the forbidden region okay so once it is ensured the remaining two stubs then it will take care of providing the impedance matching operation the triple stub tuner or the matching circuit is an ultimate solution to provide the impedance matching operation when the double stub matching simply fails okay so actually this doesn't happen but please remember all the double stub tuner circuit when we design they are associated with 
small amount of a forbidden region. Okay. So, here in order to come over to the problem of a forbidden region of a double stub tuner, we will make use of a triple stub. All the three stubs in triple stub tuner, they are separated with a distance of 3 lambda by 8 from each other. Right. And the first stub from the load side, it may be located on the load itself or it may be located at a some distance away from the load as similar to the case of a double stub tuner. Okay. So, let us see how the operation of triple stub is performed in order to provide the solution over the drawback of double stub tuner. Okay. So, the triple stub matching circuit, the impedance matching is essentially provided by only two stubs. Okay. As we already discussed, though we are calling this circuit as a triple stub, out of three stub, one stub is essentially used to bring out the transformed load admittance out of the forbidden region. Okay. So, remaining two stubs are then simply used as a double stub configuration. For example, the impedance matching will be either provided by stub A or stub B or stub B or stub C. So, if you go back over here, right. So, the impedance matching will be only provided by a couple of stubs. Those stub could be either stub A along with stub B or these could be provided by stub B and stub C. Okay. So, out of the three stubs, please remember, the impedance matching is only provided by two stubs. Either it is A along with B or it is B along with C. Okay. Then, what is the remaining role of the stub? The remaining stub will essentially used to bring out the transformed load impedance out of the forbidden region. Right? So, that procedure we will see now. So, the matching is either provided by stub A and stub B. So, if the matching is provided by two stub, that is stub A and stub B, then what is the use of stub C? That is the remaining third stub. The stub C we will then remove by making its length lambda by 4. Right? Say so what we are doing is, as the matching is provided by stub A and stub B, the stub C can be electrically removed. We are not going to remove it physically, right? We are going to remove it electrically. How that can be done? What we do is, we will keep the length of stub C is equal to lambda by 4. And as we already know that the stub C at the end, it is short circuited, okay? And if we keep the length of stub C equal to lambda by 4, so whenever this stub C is connected at the transmission line, it will provide open circuit at the transmission line. So even if stub C is present physically over the transmission line, making its length equal to lambda by 4, make it to become invisible on the transmission line. So that is electrically absent. So similarly, the same procedure we can do that we can make use of stub B and stub C for providing impedance matching and how we can remove the remaining stub then? Thus, remaining stub is a stub A that can be removed by making again its length is equal to lambda by 4. So, though it is physically present over the transmission line, main transmission line as its length is lambda by 4 and as it is short circuited at the other end, at the remaining end on the transmission line connection, it will essentially provide open circuit and thus it will become invisible. Okay. So, these above two condition of using the two stub at a time by making the third stub electrically separation, we will see these two situations. Okay. So, the working of triple stub tuner. So, this is a very important slide and you need to pay attention how this particular circuit works. Okay. As we already said that in a triple stub, the impedance matching is only provided by two stub. Okay. So, the third remaining stub is used to bring the transformed admittance out of the forbidden region. So, let us consider this first case. So, what is this first case? In this first case, there are three stubs, stub A, stub B and stub C. Okay. So, the spacing between these stub, stub A and stub B, the spacing is indicated as a D2. And the spacing between stub B and stub C is again 3 lambda by 8. 
Now here we may note that it is a very common that the first stub that is a stub A is either located on the load itself. In that particular case, the length capital L will be 0. On the other hand, the first stub may be located at some distance away from the load. So in that particular case, capital length L is non-zero. Okay, so that is known. So let us say the length of these stubs are indicated as L1, L2 and L3 respectively for these three stubs. Okay, and all these three stubs at their end, we have short circuited. Okay, so we placed short circuit at the end of all these three stubs. Right, so here what we are doing is in case 1, we are making use of stub A and stub B and we are going to remove stub C. So we are going to remove stub C. It doesn't mean that we are going to remove it physically. Practically, physically it is present over there. So how to remove the stub C from this main transmission line then? So what we do is the length of the third stub that is stub C l3 we are going to make equal to lambda by 4 okay so what will happen then to the stub number c say the stub c is short circuited at one end okay the length of this transmission line or the stub is kept as a lambda by 4 okay so if you take a transmission line of length lambda by 4 and at the one end of the transmission line if you provide a short circuit essentially this transmission line is going to provide you open circuit at the other end, provided that its length is kept lambda by 4. So what we do is, in order to remove stub C, we will keep its length L3 is equal to lambda by 4. Okay, so what will happen then? This lambda by 4 transmission line or the stub C is short circuited at one end. So it is connected to the main transmission line at the other end, right? So at the other end, it will electrically open circuit. Though it is connected in the circuit, electrically this third step is going to provide open circuit condition at the point where it is connected to the transmission line. So what will happen then? Even if physically the stub C is present in the main transmission line, it is electrically disappeared. Okay, so there is no thirds as such. Okay, so in order to remove the stub, please make sure that we need to make the length of that particular stub lambda by 4 provided at one end it is short circuited so that at the other end it will provide the open circuit. Okay, so this is the first particular case. In second particular case, what we are doing is we are going to remove the first stub itself. Okay, so this is a particular situation. It is drawn with the same thing over here. So case 2 is similar to case 1. Only the thing is that in case number 2, we are removing stub A instead of stub C in case 1. So what is the procedure to remove any particular stub out of the three stub? Again, what the whichever stub that you want to remove, make its length is equal to lambda by 4. So in this second particular case, what we are doing is the length of first stub, that is stub A, we are going to keep lambda by 4. So capital L1, we will keep lambda by 4. And this stub is short circuited at other end, right here. So if the length is lambda by 4, as per the theory, at the other end, where the stub A is connected to the main transmission line, here automatically it will collect the electrically open circuit condition. So it will create open circuit condition at the point where it is connected to the main transmission line. So if it is an electrically open circuit, what will happen then? It is as good as removed from the circuit. Okay. So as it is removed from the circuit electrically, but please remember physically it is present. The remaining two stub that is stub number B and then stub number C will provide the impedance matching circuit. Okay. So let us go ahead and see in theory how it particularly works. So case number one, what we consider is, we assume that the transformed load impedance is not located in the forbidden region. Okay. So particularly case number one over here, we assume that 
द ट्रांसफॉर्म लोड इम्पिडेंस और एडमिटेंस इज नॉट लोकेटेड इन द फॉरबिडन रीजन इफ इट इज नॉट लोकेटेड इन द फॉरबिडन रीजन देन वी नो दैट वी कैन मेक यूज ऑफ ए डबल स्टप राइट सो देर इज अ नो नीड टू यूज ऑफ थ्री स्टप राइट बट हियर वी हैव अ थ्री स्टप सो हाउ टू कन्वर्ट दिस थ्री स्टप इन टू टू स्टप so here please remember we need to remove one of the stub because in this particular situation we know that the transform load admittance is not located in the forbidden region that's why we do not need additional stub so this particular configuration has three stubs but out of three stub right now we need only two stub so what we do is we will remove the third stub that is stub number c and the same is explained over here okay so simply we can convert this triple stub into double stub so how the first configuration is converted into double stub configuration so what you need to do is keep the length of third stub that is stub c is equal to lambda by 4 and it will do the job okay so for this we will keep the length of stub c equal to lambda by 4 maintaining short circuit condition at the end of the stub so what it will do then this will essentially produce an open circuit condition at the connection to the main transmission line so here at the main transmission line wherever it is connected it will create an open circuit condition okay and thus it is electrically removed from the triple stub configuration as it is removed from the triple stub configuration the remaining two stubs are remaining and this circuit will become double stub circuit right therefore only two stubs that is stub a and b as a double stub tuner can now be used to provide the impedance matching operation okay here we note that the stub number c over here whose length we have made equal to lambda by 4 it is not physically removed physically it is still present there only the thing what we are doing is we are removing it electrically okay so that it will become invisible to the main transmission line and in order to make it open circuited we need to keep length of that transmission line or that particular stub is equal to lambda by 4 okay so here we note that the stub c is not physically removed but it is physically present but it is electrically absent as the length we have made lambda by 4 it will going to provide open circuit connection at the main transmission line okay so in this particular case one what we have assumed is the transformed load impedance is not located in the forbidden region and that's why we don't need extra stub and whatever impedance matching is required that can be easily accomplished using a double stub so if this is the requirement then we don't need a third stub so if we don't need the third stub then we want to remove it so how to remove it make its length is equal to lambda by 4 provided that at the other end you keep short circuit right so this is the first case how the triple stub circuit is used and how it is converted actually into the double stub operation so let us consider the third case or the second case particularly okay so in the second case what we assume that let us say that the transformed load impedance unfortunately got located in the forbidden region so let us discuss this second case okay so let us say in this particular second case the transformed load impedance or load admittance is located into the forbidden region unfortunately okay this should not happen but let us say the transform load impedance is located in the forbidden region then what to do okay now here please remember we need additional stub okay so we already stated that in order to bring the transformed load out of the forbidden region we need to make use of additional stub okay now here we are going to make use of that particular phenomena so in the case of transform load admittance located into the forbidden region we keep the length of stub a is equal to lambda by 4 by maintaining short circuit at its end so what we do here in this particular case let us say that unfortunately the transform load is located into the forbidden region then how to come over this particular problem now in this particular problem 
we need addition of third stub right so this third stub is nothing but the stub a so what we do is we make use of all these three stub but what we do essentially is the length of the first stub we are going to make lambda by 4 okay so what will happen if we make the length of first stub is equal to lambda by 4 provided at one of the end it is short circuited right so if we maintain the length of first stub that is stub a is equal to lambda by 4 the stub a will appear as an open circuit at the connection where it is connected to the main transmission line okay so when it becomes open circuited at the transmission line the load impedance okay so the location of the load impedance so from the stub number b okay so if you maintain the length of stub a equal to lambda by 4 it is essentially electrically absent okay so that means it is as good as removed from the main circuit of stub number a if you maintain the length of stub a equal to lambda by 4 so even if physically it is present on the circuit making its length is equal to lambda by 4 will essentially remove this stub from the main circuit then what are the two remaining stubs the two remaining stubs are stub b and stub c okay so what is the location of the first stub then if i remove stub a from the circuit what are the two remaining stubs then that is a stub b and stub c now note down where is the location of the first stub the location of the first stub is over here right so what is its location from the load then the location of first stub from the load is l plus 3 lambda by 8 so what will happen then say in second case the location of the first stub okay so the location of the first stub so the first stub become the stub number b from the load it increases by the distance l plus 3 lambda by 8 right so here if you observe in the presence of stub 1 the location of stub b from stub a is 3 lambda by 8 now if i remove stub number a how to remove stub number a make its length lambda by 4 so that it will get removed so what is the location of first stub then now the first stub will become stub number b and this first stub is located at what distance from the load it is located at l plus 3 lambda by 8 okay so this addition of the 3 lambda by 8 distance please remember is a condition to bring out the transformed load admittance out of forbidden region okay so thus the location of the first stub is represented by the stub b which will actually move the position of the load out of the forbidden region because of the additional length 3 lambda by 8 okay as the location of the first stub is remaining outside of this forbidden region then we can easily achieve the impedance matching of this given load impedance by using a double stub tuner okay so what we see over here we saw the two different cases of how to make use of a triple stub tuner circuit now please remember even if the name is the triple stub tuner essentially we are going to make use of only two stubs okay and the third stub we are going to make use of okay and how we are going to make use of it we are going to make use of it by making its length is equal to lambda by 4 and why we do so we do so because the third stub by making its length lambda by 4 will ensure that the transform load admittance will come out of forbidden region because of that excessive distance right and this particular case of forbidden region is explained in case number two okay so on the other hand if already the transform load impedance is located outside forbidden region then you can go for first particular case okay so essentially a triple stub tuner is working as a double stub tuner itself only the use of third stub is utilized in order to bring the transform load admittance out of the forbidden region rest of the operation of a triple stub tuner is as same as that of the double stub tuner 
so i hope uh, this is a simple working of a triple stub tuner okay so actually the triple stub matching circuit or tuner is used whenever we want to remove the drawback of double stub tuner circuit so here we discussed the circuit design principle of a triple stub tuner and how to make use of a triple stub tuner in order to provide the impedance matching whenever the same is failed with a double stub circuit okay so with this discussion of a triple stub tuner here i declare that module number one is fully completed right so there will not be a direct uh, uh, numerical problem on design of a triple stub tuner actually triple stub tuner is a theoretically calculated okay so only there is an inclusion of addition of uh, additional stub into the circuit okay so i hope that you have understood the theory behind the triple stub matching circuit okay and i declare that the module number one that is a transmission line and the basic of the micro engineering is now completed now from the next lecture onwards we will be starting with waveguides that is a module number two so here i will stop and thank you very much